Hello folks, hope you're having a good day today. Today I want to take a look at Lawrence Watt Evans' short story from 1987. It's called Why I Left Harry's All Night Hamburgers. It's actually a short story, it's only about 14 pages long. Um, it was originally published in Isomoff's Science Fiction in 87. It actually won Hugo Award for that year, as well as a number of other awards too. It was, an, it was shortlisted for the Nebula Award. Uh, it was also voted as the best uh, science fiction short story that year in Asimov's journal by readers um, and so forth. A lot of people thought very fondly of the story. So what I want to do for you is take a look. Now he has written ever since then. He wrote one more sort of short stories. He got he really enjoyed it. Uh, before then he was a novelist. He wrote a lot of novels, but only a handful of short stories. But that was sort of the final the, the straw that broke the camel's back. And of course, once you're a Hugo Award winning <laughs> a short story writer, your career is going to change. Right? You, you're, you're made. Right? You can write pretty much anything you want to. It can be avant-garde, people are going to want to read it. It could just be normal stuff that other people are submitting and it's not getting published and you're probably going to get it submitted and published because people are going to want to read it, right? Because you, you're you not a Hugo Award-winning short story writer, right? So, um, and it also changed, <laughs> he, he talks about it in here in, in his author um, about how like everything, that even his fantasy novels, uh, started to say, when are the Hugo or... Uh, that were being published by Del Rey during that time and so forth. F. Shar novels and so forth. So I, I like Lawrence Walt Evans. I've talked with him about you before. Um, I'm probably not going to spend too much time with him. Uh, I've talked about him in, in my appendix and in how valuable I found his his first four books um, in my own sort of fantasy journey and how much he sticks with me as a writer. Um, I've also talked about him in a few other places, but I'm not. he's not a, the sort of writer that this channel is typically going to concern itself with. A science fiction and fantasy writer uh, who wrote in the, in the 80s and 90s isn't going to, you know, my channel is concerned more with classics, people from the, you know, the 18... Uh, <laughs> 80s, not the 1980s, <laughs> uh, you know, the uh, and so forth. Um, the 1890s, sure, the 1990s, not as much. Um, but I am going to hit 87 for a couple of reasons. First of all, it won a Hugo Award, so it is a sort of science fiction classic. Um, and if you have never read it, it's only like 14 pages long, you should go ahead and read it. Second of all, it's actually set in my home state of West Virginia. So for that reason, I'm going to give him a pass. Also, uh, you know, a, if it's, it's won a Hugo Award, I would also consider it fair game. So... Let's take a look at why I left Harry's All Night's Hamburger. Again, it was published in Asimov Science Fiction in 87. So it's set in the state of uh, West Virginia. In my home, it's actually my initial hometown of Sutton, West Virginia. It's right in the dead center of the state. And um, I actually lived there for the first two and a half years of my life before I moved to the southern part of the state. Now, I obviously don't remember the first two and a half years of my life. <laughs> my first memories are down in Boone County, a tiny little town called Racine. But again, it's fun that, you know, I actually lived in the city that this is set in. And by city, I'm using the word city very, very uh, gregariously because it's very much a town uh, by any sort of modern parlance, although it's like the, the county seat of, of the county that it's in. Um, and again, it's in the dead center of the state. There's a lot of like sort of things that happened nearby, like the Flatwoods Monster, some other things that happened uh, it's in sort of spook central uh, West Virginia that are kind of cool uh, and so forth but again I grew up in this tiny little town called Sutton uh, for the first two and a half years of my life so I can definitely <laughs> say that he definitely gets you know Sutton in West Virginia right um, he actually visited this area while he was driving through he pulled off the interstate pulled into Sutton and him and his wife stopped at this diner that was there and he got this idea uh, the idea of the diner um, and, and that area stuck with him and so he went back and sort of added it to his story and so forth and it's the main feature of his story basically what's going to happen um, you're going to find out you're, you're going to know this from the title why i left and, and the entire story he's telling you uh, uh, um, he's going to be telling you um, this person is going to be looking back and telling the story uh, from first person narrative that yes he uh, sir was a student a person who worked starting at the age of 16 at Harry all night hamburgers in order to have an, an, a job he worked the late night shift um, and while he was working the late night shift um, he was told and realized very quickly um, that there are a number of people who are working on a shift or aren't fully human or aren't fully like our humans and so forth um, and he finds out that actually there is a parallel sort of all these parallel alternate worlds and many people are launching from places near Sutton West Virginia because West Virginia is in a place that's key to uh, 
anything. Uh, and so any any of these various worlds that where nuclear attacks are being launched or anything like that, it's not like up up in the mountains, this the central mountains of West Virginia. It's also convenient because it's near the center of the East Coast. Uh, and so forth. Um, so it's convenient, George, sort of geographically, it's up in the mountains, so it's further away from floods and stuff like that that may have happened to all these sort of infinities of alternate Earths. And one of the strong, and, and this is one of my favorite things in the entire story, one of the strongest things that every single multiverse has, has all these different sort of um, existences have, is that no matter what is happening in that plane of existence, how it's gone into a weird place, there is always a restaurant in the in Sutton, West Virginia, that is a version of Harry's. Now it could be called something else, right? It could be serving something other than hamburgers, right, and so forth. But it is this friendly, hospitable, welcoming place that anybody can go and get food, and they can pay in their local currency or something like that. You also find out that travel is one way only. You can't get back to your original home. Nobody has yet discovered technology. So there are a number of these sort of uh, uh, interplanar uh, travelers, dement, and wanderers and so forth that are just moving from plane to plane to plane to plane to plane. And some of them are trying to find home or a plane that's close to home or some of them are just traveling and experiencing it and so forth. Some of them probably have wander lost and so forth. Um, so I'm going to stop you. I'm not going to give you too much of the uh, sort of what's happening because I want you to read it yourself, experience it yourself and so forth. But it's a beautiful story. And of course, I'm biased because it's a West Virginia story set <laughs> in my own place uh, and so forth. Uh, but I enjoy that many of the people that are being tra that are these travelers are from our locals from West Virginia. I, I enjoy the idea of a hospitable and open West Virginia because it's exactly the West Virginia I experienced growing up, uh, both in Sutton and in Racine and Morgan town when I went to uh, on WVU for six years as for my uh, knocked out my uh, undergrad and my uh, first master's degree in public administration down there in Morgantown so it's definitely something that resonates with me this idea of this the one sort of uh, thing that's true in every single dimension no matter what's happening is that there is a place in West Virginia that's hospitable in, in Sutton Man, that just hits me to my little a happy place, and so I'm sure you can understand why I talk to you. Well, <laughs> why I'm giving it to you today, and so forth. So I hope you check it out and enjoy it. I'll, I'll link you to at least to the collection across time traffic, so you can read some of his other stories in here. There are many fantasy stories in here that are in here too, um, as well as some other stories. He actually wrote a sequel to this um, uh, uh, a flying saucer with Minnesota plates, um, which is pretty good too. Although it's more flash fiction at six pages long, whereas this one's more like a 15 page short story proper. It's been heavily um, anthologized too. Um, he says uh, in his intro here, it's been anthologized at least seven or eight times uh, and so forth. So check it out, but I'll link you to his, um, his cross time traffic so you can check out his other short stories that he started to write after why I left Harry's um, and so forth. If you've read this short story, I'd be happy to engage you with it further uh, because it's, you know, it's my story. <laughs> it's the story of my people. So if you if you've read this short story, I am happy to talk with you about it more. I will talk about it to you until the moon is stopped dimming from the sky and goes and what all goes cold and nighttime falls until the the day's daylight ends. I will talk to you about this all day long because it's just so that, such, such a a resonant story with me. It's not one of my favorite science fiction short stories of all time because I do recognize that it's not like at the level of something like Nightfall by Isaac Asimov or something like that. But it's still something that's going to stick with me. And again, it won a Hugo, so it's fair game. <laughs> so anyway, thanks again for your time. If you've watched this, uh, I do appreciate it and spending some time with me. We all have such busy days and busy lives. So I appreciate you spending some of this time with me. And hey, if you like this video, there's no reason not to hit that subscribe button. Again, we really focus on sort of these classics from science fiction, fantasy, and horror. And of course, this is a science fiction classic, even if it was more recent. So once again, I uh, hit that subscribe button and thank you again. Thanks for your time.